There are three most commonly known OBD2 readers, the budget one, the mid-tier range, and the high end. And today I'm gonna to go over what is different about each one of them. So let's go ahead and start with this cheap OBD2 reader. I'm gonna test them on my 2008 Chevrolet Tahoe. Step one is you find your OBD2 part and mine is right over there. And you just connect it right here. And you can see all the lights turning on, so we are good. This OBD2 reader and ones alike connect to your cell phone via Bluetooth. And if you have an Android head unit installed into your car, you can actually connect it to your Android head unit, which is really convenient. Then we go to settings, connect devices, Bluetooth, refresh, OBD2 will pop up, it's pair and connect. So that particular OBD2 reader will only work with this Turk app. And as you can see, we are all connected, everything looks good. So now we can go to default codes. Let's look up this fault code. We can look it up on the web if you're connected to Wi-Fi, which we are. So let's kind of connect. Can, but I'm not really too worried about that, whatever that means. But as you can see, it shows the live revs. Yep, I just gassed it. And we can go on real-time information and see the coolant level, the speed, vacuum pressure. We can test everything in the car just like this. So all the OT sensors are looking good. The EVAPs look good. It says my cap is off, but it's not off. You could also do zero to 60s and it will time it automatically which is really cool. It also has an emissions uh, readiness test or whatever. Um, does a pretty good job. So with this OBD2 reader, it's pretty solid. However, in the past I've used the V-Peak OBD2 reader, which since then I gave it to my brother, but I used that to fix the misfire in my car. So such a cheap OBD2 reader can help you diagnose issues in your car. It will bring up fault codes and all that fun stuff. But it's missing a lot of functions, and I mean a lot of functions. So that's when this comes in. To connect this to your car, we need to open up the box that came in, grab the wire to connect to the OBD2 port. Let's unplug this unit, plug in the wire, same spot, and now we connect it to the OBD2 reader. Okay, you can see it's already turning on and it's connected. Super fast, super easy. Only way to control this is going through these buttons. Let's go to auto VIN, so that looks great. Now it's loading all that data for this particular VIN number. We have a Tahoe. Yep, all that looks fantastic. LY2, the motor, yes. I think it's automatic. I'm not sure what this is. I don't think it has a pro. Let's go ahead and do a quick scan, see what pops up. We are going to 28 different faults. Okay, so this is everything that popped up. Go and click this one. Solver codes, read codes, current DTC, transmission valve. I'm not even sure what that means. I have a transmission issue apparently. Let's see the engine control module. Solver codes, read codes, current DC. So transmission torque request circuit. On the Bluetooth OBD2 reader, it showed me the control module communication bus off. But this pulled up transmission torque request circuit as well. All these codes could very well be stored codes from when I changed out the motor out of this truck and I forgot to plug in some wires. So these could very well be those codes. So because of that, I'm gonna erase them all and then see if they pop up again. It's gonna go back, back. Let's go ahead and press F1 for erase. Are you sure you want to clear? Let's do yes. So I cleared it and now it's reading the codes again. Okay, so it still has that fault. Okay, so transmission control module, pass, no fault. Fuel pump popped up. Okay. Okay, so after clearing all the fault codes, we only have two faults. So one here. Cover codes, read codes. Okay, so no fault codes found. Okay, interesting. I'm going to read that code again. Okay, now it's passed. No fault. Interesting. Let's go ahead and do this one real quick. Control module, the fuel pump. Shovel codes, read codes. So fuel pump relay circuit, high voltage, control module long-term memory reset, control module long-term memory performance. We can actually go onto live data here. This unit can show wheel speed sensors. Let's go to electronic brake control module. Let's go on live data, live data I mean. Vehicle stability enhancement system. So you have the two fronts and the two rear speed sensors. So let's go ahead and add all of those. So if you're having any ABS issues, you can turn all of these on. So many, so many different options. Here are these wheel speed sensors. I'm just gonna back up and go forward. That's all I'm gonna do right now. So you can see all these values move, so we know that all the wheel speed sensors are working as they should. All right, so we know what the cheaper Bluetooth OBD2 readers can do. Um, it does just enough. If you routinely work on your car like I do, then this is almost a necessity in my opinion. You can go through all the different functions, figure out what's working and not working. You might be wondering if this can do it all, do it all, what is the most expensive one for? Well, believe it or not, it can actually do a lot more. <laughs>
Pretty crazy. All right, so first thing we need to do is disconnect this sucker. Turns right off. And to connect this tablet, we need to open up its box and grab its Bluetooth receiver. If you don't want to use Bluetooth, you could use this wire instead and connect it directly to the iPad or directly to the tablet. I'm gonna show you how fast this connects to each other. So first let's plug in this end like we have been. Plug this in, see that it's connecting. Bluetooth is already connected very, very fast. But let's go ahead and finish up screwing this on and we are connected, we're good. We've got Bluetooth, we got power. So as you can see, we're not connected to the vehicle yet, but we are connected to this through Bluetooth. Let's go on diagnostics, let's go on VIN, auto detect the vehicle and it's just like that. Connected Chevrolet, Tahoe, automatic. I, we don't know what this means. I'll look it up. No, we do not have self leveling shocks in the back. So we are without it. And this all looks fantastic. Just like that, we're connected to the vehicle and we don't need this anymore. So this can do everything that this can do. Let's go on a quick test. Go to all diagnostics, almost done. Here's all the diagnostics. Everything came out good except for the fuel pump as we already know that we have issues there. Let's go on to trouble codes, read codes, Relay control circuit high voltage, control module long term memory to reset, and same same code. So let's go home. So from here, we can go on to engine control module. We can do active test. This is the huge difference between this one and this one. So an active test, we can literally go over each relay. This is the AC relay. We can turn it off and we can turn it back on. Let's do that again. My car is running. You see the auto decrease as I turn it off. See that I just turn it off and now I'm gonna turn it back on. So you can check and see if all the relays in your car are working. Every single relay you can check. That is insane. You can literally hear the clicking as you turn on and off the relays. And this is where it's a big deal for a mechanic. You can actually record your data. Just by pressing this button, it starts recording the entire screen. Not only that, this unit can also do special functions. We can literally change the throttle position sensor. I'm not gonna mess with that, but you can. You can do a throttle sweep, not really sure what that is. You can do a fuel trim reset, crankshaft position variation relearn, oil life reset, auto learn reset. You can do a lot. You could also program key fobs, do a key fob button test. Let's say we wanna do some live data. We can do the fuel trim. It has a lot more options compared to this as well. Let's do intake manifold. Pressure, map, throttle position indication. Stuff. Let's go ahead and do all this. And let's go ahead and go next. So here we go. We can see all the live data. We are recording the live data. You can look at these graphs. You can turn this on as well. Let's go on engine speed. We're currently recording the graph. That is insane. I love this. This is so cool. Like, let's say that's all you need to know. It's going to stop the recording. You can go back and go home. And then we can go to live data, video. My video will be right here. It's not necessarily organized the best, but you can find it. And here's all the stuff that we just went through. It's all nicely recorded. Let's say you're a mechanic, you're working on other people's car. You now have proof of what is wrong with whatever car. And you can send that to your client. I think that's a big deal. Then on top of that, this company continuously adds updates to the product. And I need to update it as you can see. So common data is why I need to update. Let's go ahead and download it. So this is professional grade. This is a hobbyist. And this is for the basic DIYer. I have a video linked down below of me diving deep into this unit here, as well as using a cheap OBD2 reader to diagnose the intake manifold issue on my Tahoe. And I don't have a video for this. This is Chris. Always appreciate and respect another. I'll see you next time.